Okay, so we'll start with the webinar. Thank you guys for sparing the time for this webinar. So this is the emerging technology webinar on Azure VM Image Builder. Myself Chaitali, your host for this webinar. So we'll start with the introduction. Before uh, before that, let me introduce uh, you all to the today's event sponsor, Synergetics. So Synergetics Learning uh, is India's most of the most distinguished learning solution company. In IT technology, we are not only restricted to this uh, like group trainings and all. We we just do the trainings on different different topics in every sectors across the every uh, industry. So you can see our expansive greenfield solutions that we provide. Onboarding solution, then we have rebuild uh, reskilling solution. Certification, certification plus add on. Cloud adoption. Architecting. Practice playbook. Latest technology training and emerging technology training. Then we have uh, organized this by ETC community and sponsored by Synergetics and Microsoft. Our ETC community is open to all the people who are interested in this emerging technologies. You just need to follow our meetup groups, which is an emerging technology community for all. You just need to install the meetup app on your phone and follow our communities. So I will share the link for the community so you can join in through that. Uh, Harold, just go ahead with the slides, no? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, former slide. Yes, perfect. So you just need to install the meetup app on your phone and follow our community. So you'll get the update on the event. Meetups we do, webinars and workshop. You can just scan in through that and you can just follow our community. Then we have small code of conduct which you all need to follow. Please note that you cannot take the screenshot of the presentation and you are not allowed to do the screen recording. For the recording, as I said earlier, we'll sh uh, share this recording on the official YouTube channel. You can just subscribe to a YouTube channel. The link has been already shared with you all in the chat box. If you all want, I will share it again with you all. Then we have agenda for this webinar. Go ahead. As you can see on the screen, what we uh, will cover in this webinar. Now the today's speaker for this session is Mr. Mahindra Shinde. Mahindra sir is an accomplished uh, training consultant and a technology lead for DevOps and Java practice at Synergetics. Then we have upcoming certification session. It will be two half a day session. The timings are already mentioned on the screen. For that, uh, I will share the registration link. If you are interested in PL 900, you can register through the link. Also do follow us on all the social media platforms like Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, where you will get the updates regarding the upcoming webinars, workshop, which we do. Now I will hand over the mic to Mahindra sir so he can take her at the webinar. Thank you guys. Thanks for your patience. Yeah, hi, thank you. So hi everyone. This is Mahindra here. Very good morning. And uh, let's get started with the session here. I'll share my screen. Let me know once my screen is visible to all of you. Okay. Yeah. I hope my screen is visible now. Everyone? Yes, yes, perfectly visible. Okay, fine. So to get started with here, uh, here we are discussing today Azure v VM Image Builder. So before we start with this, uh, I just want to know how many of you have worked with Azure Virtual Machines? 
You can raise your hand means there is uh, reaction options available in team. You can use them. So far, two people have raised their hand. Javid Ali and uh, who's the other one? Pramod Kumar. Purnam and uh, Chetan Ashok. OK, thank you everyone. So. Azure virtual machines or virtual machine in general is a great tool to migrate your existing application on cloud. You can just take your on premise application, which is maybe deployed in virtual machine, local virtual machine or bare metal machine and migrate that to Azure virtual machine. OK, and run it there and get all the benefits of cloud. OK, but a very or you can say common challenge that we face here is. How do we capture or how do we create a virtual machine image? So that we can provision number of virtual machines out of it. You may create a virtual machine image of your existing application, all the prerequisite that it need and then uh, publish it to your own uh, image gallery. And then use that particular image to later create either independent individual as your VM, or you can go ahead and create virtual machine scale set. Building images is actually a very lengthy and tedious task. And also quite boring if you have to build so many different different images. People here most of the time infrastructure guys who build their own custom images. They mostly use some kind of third party tool installed in their local machine to build the images. Are you people aware of any third party tool that you can use to create VM images? Virtual machine images. You can put this in a chat window. Fine, no worries. We will discuss that here, so let's get started. So this is our agenda here. Building images today. How do we build images? What is the traditional approach for building images? What are the challenges we face in that traditional approach? Then what is Azure VM Image Builder? The simplicity, security offered by Azure VM Image Builder. Supportability. How it exactly work? What are permissions you have to provide? What is its pricing? And then I will show you how to build an image using Azure Image Builder. Let's see here. Azure as a cloud platform. OK, sysprep tool. Uh, Javid, sysprep tool is a very basic tool which is used for, you know, converting your existing virtual machine into a VM image and it will just prepare it to be captured later on. It is still a Java tool, not a third party tool actually. Sorry, it is still a Microsoft tool. OK, as your uh, we use it on Windows. It's not a third party tool. That is what I mean to say. Now. Azure provides vanilla OS images. Vanilla OS images means base OS images which provides you just the operating system and nothing else. Like if you go to Azure portal, you can see there are virtual machine virtual machine images available for Windows Server 2019, Windows Server 2022, OK, Windows Server 2016 or Ubuntu Linux, etc. So all those are vanilla OS images. There are there is also an entity called Azure Marketplace. Azure Marketplace will offer you lots of custom images as well, uh, which may not be provided by Microsoft, but instead by some third party providers. Azure, Azure Marketplace has lots of third party providers for virtual machines. Now, why do we need customized images? Why don't we always use the base image which is available in Azure Marketplace and just write some script or manually go there and install the necessary tools, packages and application inside it because it's time consuming. Whereas customized images offers several benefits to us. They give you performance because image is already customized at per a particular requirement. Compliance, you can actually verify what all packages are installed there and rather it would become easier to first create the image, check it for the compliance and once it is compliant, right? You can mark it that this particular image is compliant. 
and then you will ask all your team that these are the compliant images you are authorized to use and these are the images which are non compliant. So compliance being very e easily implemented in here. Also, it allows you to control the licensing if in case you are using a licensed product. Creating customized images involve lots of different different skill. Do you know that a person who knows how to build Windows custom image may struggle while creating custom Linux image? To give you an example, uh, Javid has mentioned sysprep tool is used for image builder. Javid, can we do we have anything similar for Linux images to prepare them for uh, capturing? Hello. No idea. Yeah, there is no such tool. For Linux, there is no such tool. So basically, my point here is my point here is you need Windows administrator. Yes, Gurvin. You need Windows administrator to create a custom Windows image, and you need a Linux administrator to create custom Linux image. So a person who's building custom images, he or she must be aware of toolings, different package managers, system configuration, etc. about the target operating system. So you need to be you need to have fair in, enough information about the underlying OS. Uh, the tools that you can use to manage it, its package manager, configuration, etc. OK, also if you use custom tools for building your images, this is going to be a kind of an investment. Investment in skill and investment in product license port. Traditional approach of creating an image is like this. What you do, you create a base virtual machine. You first create a normal virtual machine. Inside that virtual machine, you apply the security configuration, security and configuration manual or script based. Like for example, uh, you are building an image. Let me give you my example. I will give you an example uh, which I app, which which means basically I used earlier for one of workload type. Like uh, yeah, I will give you example of a typical Jenkins VM that I created earlier. Jenkins is basically a CI tool. And how did I build an image? Number one, I created Ubuntu Linux VM. Then inside that Ubuntu Linux VM, I have to do some security. I have to set up some kind of security. So what I did, I opened ports like port 8080, port 5000 for agents, and 8080 for web UI. Then I installed all the OS updates to make sure that my operating system is up to date. Then I had to install Jenkins, which is basically a small package. If you don't know what is Jenkins, just leave it. Just consider it as some kind of package that I needed here. It, it, it has its own web UI, by the way. So I used that. Then unfortunately, Jenkins has two types of setup, the usual package setup, and then there is a post installation setup. A post installation setup requires me to actually create an admin user on Jenkins, install the plugins and everything. So I have to do the post install of this specific tool called Jenkins. After that, I have to do now because it was Linux, there was no sysprep. But it was if it was Windows, I have to do a sysprep there. Okay. So let's say just prepare it for the image. There are other techniques to use in here. Then what I did is I captured the image. Now capturing an image, this feature is already available from Azure portal. You can do it from Azure portal or you can do it from CLI. Let's mention portal. Capture the image. After the image is captured, what I did, I deleted the VM created in step number one. Is that clear? The temporary VM that created in step number one. Now this was my virtual machine and then I deployed. One instance from the image. Now you know there is lot many things which can go wrong in this approach. 
to give you an example, uh, let's say I installed everything and correctly, but I forgot to install one extension, one required extension in my Jenkins. And you know what I have to do? I have to again repeat the same process. Now the same deployed instance image, I have to again install some extensions into it that I earlier forgot to install and then followed all the process all over again to create a new base image. And guess what? It is a time consuming. And when you have to do it multiple times, it is quite boring. And guess what? It is more like a waterfall model. You can go to the next step, but you cannot go back to the previous step and correct make the corrections. Anyways, so this was kind of the traditional approach. How many of you have used this approach to create custom images earlier? May I know? Yes. Ali Mumin has mentioned yes. OK, anyone else? OK, Manoj has mentioned he is a beginner. Manoj, did you try creating custom images? like this using the traditional approach. You did this for Windows, fine. OK, fine, no worries, Manoj. So process is basically quite lengthy and you can see the number of stages here. And every time you make a mistake, you have to repeat this entire process like this. Yes, Ashish, that's good. Now, the challenges here are there is a level of complexity involved. It's time consuming. Now, this is the biggest disadvantage being time consuming. It takes a lot of time to build images using this approach. It's not scalable. Updating images would be a challenge. You require extra infrastructure and software to do this. It is cost inclusive process and it requires manual efforts. Please remember, even before we started adapting to cloud, we have already adapted automation. You know the term automation here. Am I right? Instead of doing something manually, is it possible to convert that entire process, that entire workflow into some kind of automated workflow, which will run on, run on its own? And it doesn't need our interaction or any, you can say, uh, manual input as such. Automation has great benefits. The same thing will be done in lesser time. It would run as unattended mode. You don't have to sit in front of monitor and monitor it all the time. You can let it run any time and then you can just go and check the logs, whether it has done it successfully or not. OK, and you can also run it in parallel when it is automation. Parallel execution means. You might be actually building multiple images at once. In parallel, basically. OK, so what is Azure VM image builder? Azure VM image builder is a cloud as a service or cloud service. Pick your source image. You can pick your source image, create a template and image configuration like what all things you expect inside that image. You can define it. You can set the RBAC control on it. You can set the VNet integration for it. Then existing image uh, support cost effective. If it is there, options are already there. You can use that. And you can also include this in your DevOps CI CD pipeline. Think this way. It will be like every time your application is built, every time your application is built, in your deployment pipeline, you take that application, put it into a virtual machine image and publish that virtual machine image to your image gallery. That could be your CI pipeline, integration pipeline. And what would be your deployment pipeline? Your deployment pipeline would be take the image from the gallery that you have recently created and deploy virtual machine skill set out of it. Getting my point.
sorry. So we can include it in CI CD. One of the benefit here is simplicity. It means there is no need of any complex tool. Image building can be done using lots kind of complex tools also. OK, so you don't need any complex tool. You can integrate it with some kind of automation like you can put it in a CI CD pipeline. Now, I, I guess somebody has mentioned here. Uh, Yash has mentioned to repeat it. Fine. I guess instead of just repeating it with words, I will just draw it here. OK, I will share the diagrams later on. So this is image. Builder. OK, let's see. It might be possible that you have an application somewhere in a Git repository. Then from there you have your own build workflow, some kind of automation script build workflow. And inside the build workflow, you can include this process of number one, build app and number two, build image for the app. Getting my point? You can have your CI workflow or you can have your continuous integration workflow, build workflow, which will first build the application using whatever build tool you might be uh, using. Like it might be a .NET, it might be MS build, it could be Maven, it could be Python, whatever language it might be. Build your application first and then build an image for that application, VM image for that application. That could be your build workflow. And then you can have another workflow, a deployment workflow, what we call in DevOps as uh, CD, continuous deployment, would be, uh, sorry, I just mentioned, I just have to mention one more step here. What is the other step I said? Publish the image to gallery. There is something called image gallery where images could be published. Now here, what you can do is pick the image from gallery, And let's say deploy VMSS. You know VMSS, right? Virtual machine skill set, having multiple instances. Think this way. You can create this particular workflows or you can set up this workflows in such a way that every time developer makes changes to source code, it will build the image, create an image gallery. Uh, sorry, it will build the application, create the image in image gallery, then pick that image and deploy it in VMSS. Don't you think it would be, you know, kind of a much sophisticated automated workflow that every time developer makes change your application on the production environment or your application on this environment, server and environment automatically updated? Does make sense? Yes. Yes. Right. OK, fine. Let's continue. So these are all the benefits here. You can integrate it with automation tool. Now DevOps is just one example. There are a lot many other automations you might use in here. You can integrate it with gallery. That means images that you publish could be submitted to a gallery. And from that gallery, see there are another possibility here. You can have a subscription shared between you and the other team. There is an organization subscription and there is a team who may be responsible for building the container images developers and there might be another team who are just going to pick those images from the gallery and deploy them so operations team basically you can have that kind of access there you can actually distribute the images like this you can have for every image for every image it could be like you know you can have image version one image version two image version three image version four you know what is benefit of that any guess Consider a scenario. You developed your developer have built a newer version, let's say version four, and that newer version has some kind of bug and you have to immediately go back to the older version. You can do that. You already have image version three and image version four. Yes, you can also have keep track of all the versions and you can go back to an older version if your latest version has a bug. So what you can do, go back to the older version deploy virtual machines of older version 
while your team of developer is fixing the bug. Once they fix the bug, they will release a newer version. Does it make sense? Yes. OK. Then easy lifecycle management. Life cycle of image, image built, image updated, image used. OK, all that unified approach. Same approach for everything. Now, what if I tell you there won't be a much difference in building a Windows versus building a Linux image here? Yeah, the template would be different. The content of the template or the script that you provide would be different, but the process outside it would be seen. Copy files from storage account. Now for building a virtual machine, you might have to sub provide certain files. Like for example, like I told you about example of Jenkins. In order to install Jenkins, there were some prerequisites required. Like I needed Java, Java uh, Development Kit, JDK. I needed Jenkins.war. So what you can do for setting up your environment, if you need any kind of files, you can keep all those required files in a storage account. And then your VM image builder will pick those files from that storage account to build the image. You know what is benefit here? Your image builder and your storage account is that same region. Right. And they will have kind of low latency. Your image builder will be able to quickly pick things from the storage account. Which will be much faster than downloading Jenkins file from Jenkins.io website. OK, or downloading the JDK from Java.net. Storage account might give you even higher IOPS or higher uh, lower latency, much lower latency like that. OK, you might have your own custom contents also. Maybe like your application is actually deployed to a storage account. An image builder will just pick it from the storage account and add it inside a VM. I hope you are getting my point here. In Azure, we have another concept called golden image management. All those images that you build, OK, all those base images from which you prepare the image builder, the base images is called golden images. Golden images are basically compliant images which are automatically patched and which already provide a base security from the vendor. Vendor means here in this case, it would be Microsoft or some other vendor which is there in Azure Marketplace. You can pick an image from Azure Marketplace and use it in your image builder. The images which are available here for image builder, we call them golden images. These images already have compliance security already set. What you just have to do is based on those golden images, add your own packages, add your own application configuration and get ready. They offer quick patching. They provide security baseline. Your golden images will be patched, means all the required security updates, important updates will be installed by the vendor itself. Provides you better RBAC control. If you want, you can tighten the access permissions to your images or to your VMs. You can also integrate it with managed identity. Now, those people here who are, uh, you know, kind of experienced with Microsoft Azure infrastructure services, there is a concept of managed identity that allows virtual machine to access other Azure resources via a passwordless kind of authentication. Managed identity. So you can integrate managed identity here. Network integration. Either create it into a new network or just connect to an existing network. Both the approaches are there. You can either go with a new network for your virtual machines or you can just Put them in an existing network if required. And you can then refer it from your other infrastructure services deployment. Like you might have some other set of virtual machines, virtual machines, scale set, networks, etc. You can all connect there, integrate it there with other infrastructure services. Okay. Operating system support. Now, as I told you earlier, golden images. Now these are the images which are available here. As you can see here, we have got images from Microsoft like Windows Server 2019, 2016, Windows 10, RSPAR Enterprise or Enterprise Multi-Session or Professional. Then we have uh, 
open source, uh, source enterprise Linux, source enterprise Linux 12, 15 or 15 SP1, 12 SP4, etc. We have CentOS, we have Red Hat, we have Ubuntu, and we have a custom images from another vendor, CBL Marina. RBAC, uh, Alim, RBAC is role based access control. Depending upon what is the role of given user, allow or disallow him or her to perform certain action. That is what RBAC is. Okay, fine. Yes, all these are golden images which are automatically patched by their respective vendor. Ubuntu images are patched by Canonical, the vendor, and Microsoft images, Microsoft. Windows images are from Microsoft. So how does it work basically? So you define a source. Now your source could be either a Linux or a vir Windows virtual machine. Then you provide set of customization. Now what is the customization? The customization would be literally a folder that contains some artifact. Now this would be Azure storage. Then there could be a PowerShell script for Windows. There could be a Bash shell script for Linux, right? There would be a network that it would connect to, right? There could be some updates you can configure into it. Like for example, a best practice which I follow every time is every time you are building a new image, first thing that you should do is check for the OS update. Check for the OS update before installing any of your own stuff. Do this, then go ahead, install your application, configuration, binaries, everything. Image Builder will build that on the cloud, and then it will create an image. Now, this image, this particular image, you can publish this image to Azure Shared Image Gallery, or you can publish this image to your own private gallery. You can create a private image gallery also, which is accessible to all your subscription users. And this image will provide you a compliant and secure, you can say, image template. You can now deploy it. Now, what is benefit of deploying it to a gallery? Once we deploy it to a gallery, we can access it from multiple regions also. You can actually define the primary region and secondary region as well, and you will allow your other team members to actually deploy it onto their workload. And we will have multiple versions also, like version 1.0, version 1.1, etc. Now, whatever images you have built, please remember your image, your virtual machine image is inherited from the source image. Getting my point? If the source images are golden base images, your image will actually carry that attribute further. Why? For OS update, vendor will provide the update for this base image you have built, right? Because they are literally inherited from these existing images. They are already compliant. Make sure that you are also enforcing compliance here while installing the stuff, right? Okay. So image builder service, a service itself runs on cloud. You don't have to build it on your local machine. Please remember building an image locally on your local machine could actually take a lot of time. OK, it could be very slow. Whereas when you run this particular process on cloud, it will run much smoother. It will run much faster. And best thing is. It won't use your CPU and RAM, your local machine. OK. So what do we do? How does it work? You register the resource provider. You create and submit the configuration. You create the image template resource and then you invoke the template. These are the four steps. These are the four steps. What I would recommend is before you can try all this thing, you need to have access to Azure CLI. Do you know Azure CLI anyone? Hello? Yes, Azure CLI is a command line interface that allows or that can actually allow you to manage your Azure resources from CLI, from command line. And it is much faster than using portal. 
obviously portal would be easier but for creating something as complex as image builder right cli is better approach let me tell you why cli is better cli is better because it gives you much more control and you can create your own script convert multiple commands into your own script and then invoke the script only whenever required so what i will do here i have written my own script and what i will do today only i will publish that into a github repository and i will share the repository url with all of you what will happen then you can try image builder easily without writing much of the code without without writing or with no reason to actually create much of the code don't be afraid of all this script in my screen can you see this hello if you have azure cli available you just have to invoke everything with a small uh, you can say you just have to follow a small uh, uh, walk through to create everything so here it is i have this repository with all the script stored in the linux script folder these are the script these are the resource providers now this i have created the script to automatically check if all the resource providers are registered if any register if any uh, provider is not registered you will get a response like this and it will show you whether a particular provider is registered or not okay we will do this after in the uh, lab section is that clear everyone hello yeah okay so this is this part register the resource provider if they are already registered you can skip then create a submit configuration so you will notice here i have just done the registration part then if i go and check this build image task you will notice what i am doing in build image task i am actually building the image providing all the templates now these are my templates i have created uh, this image template here you will notice the image template is actually just a json file and this json file will take some input a shell script another shell script certain files few files another shell script again another shell script again you can have multiple shell script multiple files in whatever you can say sequence you want and then this is the distributed option where i'm just specifying where to keep the final image the final image i want to keep it as a shared image on my subscription is that clear and this is just for documentation i want this particular image to be based on ubuntu 22 and this image will be available in these two regions okay so this is what create and submit configuration image template resource create the image template resource invoke and run the template this is where actual image building will take place the process when you run you might have to wait for few minutes and then it will give you a message like your image is successfully built and now deploy to image gallery and then you can use it later to create a normal vm yes any questions you have by the way anybody any questions hello okay now let's see then permissions required just like anything yes it involves pricing yes but the pricing is very flexible the actual cost you will be paying for is compute cost this process here as your vm image builder service requires some compute resource cpu ram network storage you have to pay only for that getting my point to give you an example here i mention as your storage account to for picking up the artifact if your artifact are just few mbs you have to pay for their storage cost storage cost of few mbs if your artifacts are in several gbs you have to pay that okay so 
for the entire process, there is no different cost as such. It is the basic as your compute cost only you will be paying. Depending upon how much time, how much CPU and RAM, network and storage, this entire process is consuming on Azure. As far as uh, uh, permissions are concerned, you need to provide the service principle or you have to provide the Azure user assigned identity. Both of these are basically permissions used or identity or uh, service principle is basically a way you authenticate and authorize this entire process to consume your other Azure resources. Please remember virtual machine image builder will run as some kind of process or some kind of service and that service or process need to have access to your Azure subscription. And for that, you will be providing a permission like this. How many of you have used service principle and how many of you have used uh, managed identity? Anyone? Fine, no worries. I will just go to a diagram and I'll show you for a brief. What basically is it? Please remember. A process, any process, third party or user defined process, whatever it is, cannot actually have exclusive access to your Azure subscription. In order to make any changes or in order to consume any Azure services, it has to be provided some kind of authorization for that. Here we have Azure Active Directory, who is responsible for authentication and authorization. OK, one which will provide authentication and authorization. Now, for a given virtual machine or for a given device, which is actually going to use, let's say, all the required Azure resources, you will either have to give it a managed identity managed identity and using this managed identity. This particular device will act as a normal user to Azure AD and Azure AD will have some permissions assigned to it. Permissions like OK, this particular device or this particular VM is allowed to use or allowed to create storage, allowed to create VM images, allowed to uh, let's say create or manage databases. I'm just giving you an example. Some RBAC is already created there or it can use service principle. Now, do you know that? Do you know that Azure CLI also connects to Azure AD using a service principle only? Rather, service principle is more popular with lots of different kind of applications, even third party ones. Have you heard about an open, uh, open source and third party tool called Packer? P A C K E R. Anyone? Yes, Pramod? Um, yeah, it's, it's from Hashicorp, right? Yes, that's right. It's from Hashicorp. And what it does? What is main benefit? I think it is uh, it's being used for image building process also. Yes, exactly, Automated. exactly. So let's say in case if you are not using as your image builder, if you are using some other third party tool to build your own custom images, even then you have to use service principle. Even then you have to use service principle to tell you frankly, in case if you are using as your image builder, as your image builder, as your image builder, require either managed identity or service principle to be able to do anything on your Azure subscription. But in case if you are using third party tool, third party tool, like for example, Packer, right? Then Packer will need service principle to be able to perform anything, any operation on your Azure subscription. So service principle is more versatile. Basically, you can use service principle with third party tools as well, whereas managed identity is only for Azure resources. Service principles can be used for Azure as well as 
other outside resources as well. Okay. Hello. Yes. Right. Uh, more about Azure Active Directory, RBAC, and everything is mostly covered in Microsoft Certification AZ900. I'm oh, sorry, AZ. Uh, uh, that is a, a basic uh, Azure administration uh, course available, AZ104, where it is more discussed. Anyway, our discussion about this is only limited here because our main objective is not Azure Active Directory. Our main objective is Azure Image Builder. Now, service principle is only to identify, authenticate, and authorize any component that need access to your Azure resources. To allow any component, any device, any application to be able to, you know, manage your Azure resources, start, stop, VM, create them, create network, everything. Now, cost wise, what is the cost? As I told you, there is a compute cost. You may use, let's say, standard D1, V2, or you may use D2, uh, D, uh, DS, V4. Now, these are just examples, okay? The cost depends on, the compute cost depends on what size you have chosen. There would be a network cost. There would be a storage cost, and there might be a regional egress. What is egress? Egress and ingress. Egress means outward traffic, basically. Okay, so you may, will be charged for these things. But remember, the egress and ingress cost actually depends on how much bandwidth you are actually consuming. Okay, how much bandwidth you are actually consuming. It depends on that. How much data is going out and how much data is going in, coming in. It depends on that. Okay, let's now see what we can find in Azure Docs pages for this image builder. Ready? Azure Docs image builder. Oh, I made a spelling mistake, but that's fine. It is still able to show me the details. Azure VM image builder. Hello, can you see this? All of you. Yes. So these are all the features available right there. OK, now there is one more thing about Azure Image Builder. Azure Image Builder is available in only these regions. Can you see the list? But don't worry. As of now, Microsoft might be adding few more regions. OK, now all these regions you can use for Image Builder. But once you build the image, that image can be distributed outside these regions also. Getting my point. To give you an example, to give you an example, you will notice Southeast Asia is already included here, but South India is not included here. Can you see that? So what you can do, you can build the image in Southeast Asia and then distribute it or make it available. The final images that you build, make them available to South India. Is that clear? These are the regions where Image Builder itself is supposed to run. OK, so make sure that whatever images you are building, you are building them in the compatible resource uh, locations or uh, regions only. OK, and this is how you can check whether, sorry, this is off, off the scope. This is for US government uh, uh, scope. OK, not for us. We will be using the public uh, public Azure cloud. Now these are the operating system images as I discussed earlier. This is how it works. We have seen this already. The permissions wise, we have seen everything. Fine. Do you want to know how many images are already available to us in the Azure Resource Manager? Azure Resource Manager already has several set of virtual machine images available for us. And if you have Azure CLI installed, you can literally go and check how many images are available there. Azure VM image. List. 
Let's say I want to list all the publishers. Wait a second. OK, publisher is let's say Microsoft. Windows. Desktop. OK, let's press enter and see how many images are there. I already have Azure Virtual Machine. Uh, sorry, Azure CLI installed. Looks like viewing offline list. I don't want an offline list. OK, there are some more parameters available like uh, I may have to provide SKU or I can provide just double hyphen all. Let's see how many images are available. Double hyphen all will give you up to date list. These are not the images from image builder. These are images in. The Azure marketplace and obviously all these images, most of these images you can use them for building your own. Custom image using image builder. This will take some time, little bit of time to, you know. Populate the list. I will explain the script later on to you. By the way, many of the things can now be done using Azure portal as well. Let's just give it a minute to run. Yes, finally I got this list. You will see all these images are available in. The official Azure marketplace. OK, like Windows 10 VM images are there. Windows 11 images are there, right? All these are Windows desktop. Images enterprise version pro version, etc. Yes, I will share the GitHub repository. I have not yet uploaded it on GitHub, OK? Let us now see what all services you need to have registered for making use of this. Is my screen not visible? I'll, I'll do one thing. I'll quickly reshare it. Is it now visible? Karanam? Yes, it's, it's visible. It's visible now, right? OK, fine. Fine, so these are list of images. Let us now see one by one what all services need to be available or what all uh, let's say resource providers needs to be there. Number of resource providers that we need to verify here are these. So I guess this is in my D drive. So D drive. Git, and this is. Image builder. Linux script. So this is my image builder Linux script. Let me just run my wait, wait, wait. All these are Linux script. I need to use Ubuntu bash to run them. The SH files won't run in Windows PowerShell. OK. So you can actually also use uh, Cloud Shell as your Cloud Shell to run these commands. OK, so here I will have to give a path like this. Get image builder. Yeah, this is the right directory now. And let's go to the Linux. Let's go to the script. And let me run here 00, 00 as your provider.sh. Let it run and tell me what all register uh, 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 as your CLI providers are registered already and what all providers are not registered. Can you see the response I'm getting here? My script is telling me that all the required providers are already registered. Now, obviously my Azure subscription is already five years old, so there are chances that I have used all these resource types one time or later. 
So you will see it's saying all the providers were already registered. No need to register any new provider. Don't worry if there is any provider not registered already. My script will register them automatically. If you want to know how my script is working, let me show you. This is AZ provider. Forget about the shell script. This is how this is the command I'm using to check whether a particular service is registered or not. AZ provider show name of the provider is Microsoft virtual machine images query registration state and displayed. Similarly, check if key vault is registered, check if compute is registered, check if storage is registered, and check if my uh, network is registered. There are high chances that these three services are already registered if you have created a virtual machine, storage, or network. There are high chances these services are already registered. This may or may not be registered, and this might be the one that requires registration. Getting my point? Hello. Just give me a minute. I will quickly check if I have posted it on GitHub. If not, I will post it and then you can check yourself whether it is registered on your system. Also, if you have the access, if you have the access. OK, it's not. Fine. Just give me a minute.
OK, I have done now. My repository should be available. Let me show you where you can access my repository from now. Uh, I will share the URL with you. Just give me a minute. It's now available. Yes, my CLI is already authenticated. Ashish, that's right, because my Azure CLI already has done the authentication. If you want me to show you how to do the authentication, I can show you that. Authentication is done with the help of a small utility, a small utility command in Azure CLI called uh, AZ login. You can say AZ login, press enter, and it will then ask you to uh, you know, open a small page where you have to perform the authentication. I can show you how it is done basically. I have already authenticated. OK, in case if you just don't want authentication again, I can easily log out. Log out means I will kill my login station. I have now logged out. If you have logged out and if you try any command after you have logged out, it will fail with an error. Let me show you that. Now because I have logged out, it will say no subscription found. You need to set the subscription. So opposite of logout is login. You have to say AZ login. Now, once you write AZ login, it will open a browser page like this, and it's giving me this. A web browser has been opened at this URL. Please continue to log in in the web browser. Now, I will log in here with my Azure subscription. This is my Azure subscription linked account. So here I will log in into this. As soon as I have logged in, I will get a message saying you have logged in into Azure, you, uh, Microsoft Azure, and I have got access to these subscriptions here. Unfortunately, I have multiple subscription and out of which I have to make sure that I have correct subscription added. Yeah, I guess it has picked up my correct subscription. Can you see this? This is my Azure subscription. We call it Azure Cloud. This is the default one and my subscription name is Visual Studio Enterprise. OK. Now. Please tell me what please let me tell you one thing here. The authentication here is behind the scene using some kind of service principle that got generated as soon as I logged in into uh, this particular Azure CLI. When you say AZ login and when it opens a browser page like this, you know what it is doing in behind the scene. First, it will ask me to log in with my username and password. And then immediately it will create a service principle and import it here. So we have actually using some kind of service principle to log in into this particular session. Is that clear? Yes. If I now try something like this, AZ VM list, it will show me the list of VMs now. Am I clear? Hello. Please remember this type of authentication is called persistent session. Persistent means after I did a login, I never have to run login again unless I log out. Now every day I can just start my PowerShell or uh, shell any terminal and start using AZ commands directly. No need to log in again and again. OK, I hope that's clear now. Yeah. Oh, so. You also can go and log in into your Azure CLI like this. In case if you don't have Azure CLI, you can install Azure CLI from uh, here. I'll show you where you can download and install Azure CLI. Azure Docs, Azure CLI, and you can install Azure CLI on Windows or you can install Azure CLI on Linux. For Windows, this is the link. I will share the link with you. Just go to go through this link and check if you can download and install it on your machine as well. OK, this is how you can install as your CLI. As your CLI install for Windows. There are multiple ways you can install it. There is even a Microsoft installer available here. The most easier one. OK. MSI installer, you can just click on this list, a link 
and it will take you to a download page where you can download the MSI file, which is a Microsoft installer file and just usual double click on the file. Next, 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 finish. And as your CLI is installed. That easy. For Linux users also as your CLI is available and uh, you can just have to choose which uh, basically Linux operating system type you are using. You might be using Debian or Ubuntu. You might be using CentOS or Red Hat. You might be using Mariner. You might be using SUS Enterprise or OpenSUSE or some other. There is even a bash shell script available here. If you don't know which Linux operating system you are using, install it using script. It support all the other operating system types, Linux operating system types, by the way. OK, to be very frank, let me tell you one more thing here. I am using two different types of shells. Here in Ubuntu 22 shell, also I have Azure CLI. I actually have two different Azure CLI. One that I access from Windows PowerShell and the other one that I access from here. Is that clear? This is a different Azure CLI. This installation and this installation is different. Why I'm using two? Because very uh, often I have to use it on Linux or I, very often I have to use it on Windows. For you, there is no need to actually install it in both the ways. Just one of them is enough. Okay, fine. Unfortunately, the script I have created here requires Ubuntu shell because I have created all the .sh files, if you would have noticed. In case if you don't want to use Ubuntu shell, unfortunately, you have to go and run all the commands manually and you cannot use the sh files that I have provided. Is that clear? Fine. So this is how script you have to run and the script which I'm running right now here. Wait a second. Let me go back here to the folder which is MNT D drive. My get folder and this is as your image builder. Image builder, sorry. Linux and inside Linux there is script. And inside script, the script that I launched here was 00 azprovider.sh, which will simply quickly check and tell me if everything is fine. As of now, I have created this entire script for Linux Bash. Okay, maybe in future I will convert it into a PowerShell script so that you can probably run it on PowerShell as well instead of running it from Linux shell. Anyway, what you can do is I will share some of the commands with you because I hope all of you are using PowerShell. Am I right? Hello. You are all using PowerShell if I'm not wrong. So for PowerShell, these are the commands which will actually show you whether all these services are already registered. These are the commands to check if they are registered. Please remember verifying whether the particular resource provider is registered. Each one of these commands might take approximately, uh, you know, five to ten seconds. Or it might actually take even less. So these are the commands I have shared in your shell window, uh, chat window. You can run these provided you have logged it into Azure CLI and you can check if all these services are registered. If you have not registered to them, you can always go ahead and register them using this command. The commands to register them are these. Wait a second. I guess it would be better if I just properly format it. Give me a minute. Register all resource providers and I will just share all the script with you. This is for compute. And this one is for key vault. And this one was for storage. And one, one more is there for the network. Right, all these. So you can 
first try which uh, which resource providers are already registered, which resource providers are not registered, and then go ahead and register them. Is that clear? So if you have logged in into Azure CLI, do check whether all these resource providers are registered. If not, just run the last script that I have shared with you, AZ provider register, AZ provider register, and register those providers now. Those people who are new to Azure, you may or may not have all these services registered. So you may have to, like for example, uh, let's say for uh, who's there who mentioned Manoj. Manoj, you might have to register all of them. Okay, so you may have to register all the four services uh, resource types. Okay. Yes. This is the base prerequisite, you can say. After that, we need a role definition. We need to create a role definition. How do we create a role definition that will allow us to basically, uh, you know, create the required permissions? So let me show you my readme file here. You can access this readme file from my Git repository as well. Linux. This is the readme file, the image builder template. So I'm using right now WSL bash window for running all the script. I already run this, which gave me or uh, which simply allowed me to verify whether everything is configured correctly. The script that I used was this 00 az provider dot sh. OK, then set the environment. Now what I will do here is I have to create some proper environment setup here. So I have included this file. Can you see this? Hello. Let me tell you what all I have in included in here. First of all, what should be the name of resource group where image builder itself will run? Can you see this? I have created an environment variable called SIG resource group. And this is the resource group name. You can give it whatever resource group name you wish to provide. Then provide the location. I want my image builder to run in West US. Then additional region. The second region for image builder would be East US. Both West to and East US is supported. My gallery name. What should be my image gallery name? I want my image gallery name to be my gallery. And what should be my image definition name? I want my image definition that should be created under gallery to be my image dev. Run output name. Image one, it should be displayed in an output. My subscription ID will be picked up automatically by a script, and this is the publisher name. Obviously, if you want to do something, you can provide your own name. This is a publisher name that will appear in Azure portal when you try to create a virtual machine from this particular image. Offer name. Let's say I gave it a useful name, Jenkins Ubuntu. Actually, this, this particular image, I'm not actually trying to install Jenkins. It's just a hello world image, kind of. But I just gave it a name. So when somebody tries to create virtual machine from this image, he or she will see this name. Now, if you are on Windows PowerShell, if you are on Windows PowerShell, how to actually set the environment variable? On Windows PowerShell, you have to use dollar symbol before every variable name for powershell for linux shell that this is not required but for powershell this is required we'll take a break after this is that fine hello yes okay so we will just set the yes, environment variable OK. OK, fine. OK, now. Let me share the entire script with you here. This is again I'm sharing as a PowerShell snippet. 
these are the variables please remember you can modify the value of those variables not the name but the values can you see the chat message now hello uh, there is nothing not received anything check it now yeah yeah same i have said variables variables for powershell okay and uh, there are quite few variables nine variables in total i have defined so you can modify some of the variables don't change anything in subscription id but other ids you can change now because i'm using shell script i will instead write here a script like this source -E. this is basically only applicable to linux source set env that means all the environment variables are now kind of uh, imported successfully and I can check the values from here like SIG resource group name is image gallery RG. Right. Whenever you have to restart the shell, you just have to make sure that these variables are reset. Let's do one thing. Let's take a small break in here and then post break. We will. I will show you how to do this. Some of you can try this. Uh, along with me, but please remember you need to have a Azure subscription to do this and you need to have Azure CLI. You should be logged in into Azure CLI to try this out. Is that clear? Yes, everyone. Yes, sir. Fine. So here we are. Let me just start the timer. So you all will know when we will join back. Just 10 minutes.
So, okay, I'm back now. Hello. Yeah, everyone, can you raise your yeah. hands? Yes, sir. Okay, okay, fine. So, as you can see, I have done the uh, basic part here where I was trying to just import all the variables. I have defined all the variables that I will use throughout the script. Now, my next task here is what is the next task now? I have created, I have checked the providers. Now I have set the environment variables. So uh, now I should be, you know, kind of uh, able to start with the next part. All the variables are created. Now I need a template. I need a role definition or I need to provide certain privileges for the role. Now this can be done via script or this can be done manually. On my system, I can do it manually, but on your system, because you are not using shell script, you have to do it manually then. So let me tell you what I will do here. For me, the task is like this. Wait a second. Okay, what I will do here is I will just, you know, take this file and run the script. You will see this is my role definition. Let's go there and run this. 02 build image dot sh. For me, it will just do everything. It will import all the variables and create the resource group that we have defined. OK, resource group created. It will create the new user identity based on the input that I have supplied. Meanwhile, let me share with you. Let me share with you what it will create here as a role definition. This is my role definition. Now, please remember in this role definition, there will be several changes. Like, for example, can you see this one? You have to replace this with your subscription ID. And this would be the resource group name. Can you see that? Hello? Uh, yes, sir. Right? So this yes, one sir. here is the subscription. Subscription. ID and this one here is the resource group name. This one here is the resource group name and this one here is the generated name. You just have to provide some globally unique name for it. So this role definition, if you notice one thing, this role definition will allow image builder. This role definition will just give you uh, or give your image builder all these permissions. Now let me check or let me tell you how many permissions are needed. This particular image builder need read permission on gallery, read permission on images on gallery, read permission on images version, write per permission on image version, write permission, read permission and delete permission on image. In short, I just want to make sure that my image builder can read, write or delete my images on image gallery. Is that clear? Without these permissions, later script will not function properly. So let me do one thing. I will share with you the new script or the JSON file here with you. Now this is my JSON file. I will just call it role definition. Role definition dot JSON and these are the contents of my JSON file here. I'm sharing them with you. Just give me a minute. OK. Can you see my role definition in a chat window now? Just go and check your chat window now. You can see my role definition. Please remember in the role definition file, you have to make few changes. You have to provide your subscription ID and you have to provide the resource group name. And these are the actions we are permitting. These are the actions we are permitting on this particular role. So we want as your image builder to have read and write access on image gallery and images inside image gallery. Fine. Let me go and check the script. Looks like my script has already done this part and now it is building the image. It has already gone to the image run task, but let me explain you what it is actually going to do now. So what we did, we got the role definition. And here you will see my script 
my script is using a Linux utility called SCD to you know modify the role definition template and add a subscription ID, add resource group name and image definition name respectively inside it. Now role definition is created using az role create command. Can you see the command here? Hello. Uh, yes. Right. So this will create a new Azure role. Please remember you can create this role using Azure portal as well, but in portal it will relatively take lo longer time because it is a custom role. You can define custom role in Azure as your portal using the portal interface, but it is little lengthy process. Oh, sorry, these are Active Directory role. What we need here is not Active Directory role, uh, but we need role for Azure subscription. So let's go to the subscription. And here in subscription, you can see there is an option for uh, access management. Okay. These are the built in roles available here. What we have created is not the built in role. What we are creating is a new custom role. Getting my point? using the CLI. Let's see the the role created by me here is accessible from the Azure portal. OK. This is the name of role. Let me go and check if this role exists here. These are list of predefined roles and let's see if my created role appears here. On Azure portal, it might take some time for uh, these roles to, you know, kind of pop up. These are the roles given to my Visual Studio Enterprise subscription. Maybe this role is not for subscription level. It's actually for resource group level. Let's go and check the resource groups then. That's my resource group. For resource group, I will go and check the access control. And from access control, let me go and check the role assignment. Let's see if this custom role appears here. OK, it's not yet applied. As your portal is little slower when it comes to showing these type of updates, it's not getting shown up here, but the role assignment is actually done successfully. Let me check how many different roles are there. These are the other, uh, you can say, old rules which my which, which I might have created earlier. Fine. Showing filter set up result. OK, it might show up here because definitely role is created because my script has already proceeded proceeded to the next part where it is actually building the image. Can you see this? My script has already gone forward, created the gallery and running a job now. I can show you the image gallery created by my script. What we are creating here is Azure Compute Gallery, and you will notice a new gallery has been created here with name My Gallery under resource group name Im Image Gallery RG. This is my resource group name, and this is the gallery name. This is the gallery I have created just now via script basically, and uh, I'll, I'll show you this here. This is the image definition which is created here. You will notice this image is already generalized and you can now 
create virtual machines from it as well as soon as build is completed. Can you see the publisher name, offer name and SKU here? Did you remember all these things are actually what I have defined in those variables? Hello? Can you see that? The image itself is not yet available because I believe my script has not completed yet. It is still running. Once it's done, we can check the image version. OK, now. Now I'm just waiting for the task to complete. OK. So did you get the role definition file? How many of you have edited this role definition file, which I have shared with you? You just have to place your subscription ID and uh, you just have to provide your resource group name there. How do I get the subscription ID? Do you know how to get the subscription ID that you can add in that uh, file? This is the command you can run in your as your PowerShell or as your shell to get the subscription ID of your account. When you run this, it will return a subscription ID. Use that subscription ID in your role definition. OK, and your resource group and the command which will actually create this role definition. Let me share the command also with you. The command which I want you to use is this command. After your role definition file is up to date, right? Run this command and it will actually create a new as your role that you can the later use with image builder. After that, once the as your builder as a role role is created, you can assign that role to the image builder using next command, which is a Z role assignment command. So let me show you this for my script. These two things are already done. So this is where I created a new role definition and this is where I assigned this role definition to my image builder. How do I know which is image builder? There is a variable that will show me what is the image builder here. Image builder ID. OK, and this is the role and this is the scope. Scope is resource group name. After that, these are the commands that actually created my uh, image gallery and this is the command where I created the image definition name. OK, so creating the gallery and creating the image definition. These are the two commands that will take it forward and create them. The gallery name and the image definition name. If gallery and image definition is already created, you don't actually have to repeat it. You can just use the existing gallery or you can use the existing image definition name as well. Otherwise, just use the script. OK, then. The image template. Now let me show you the image template here. OK, here is the image template and you will notice here. My image template here is basically looks like a standard ARM template which we use for Azure. How many of you have worked with ARM templates? May I know? Azure resource manager templates. How many people here? OK, looks like only two people have raised their hands. That's fine. So 
This is basically an ARM template where I'm saying I'm defining a virtual machine image. This is the builder name. This is the user identity enabled for it. Identity is already applied here. This is the user identity it's going to use internally, right? And uh, this identity I have updated it via a script. After that, the image profile would be like this. The standard image size would be standard D1 V2, and I want build to take maximum 80 minutes. If my build takes more than 80, it will get canceled. You have to define the value, whatever you want. Then it's a platform image from Canonical. Image offer is Ubuntu, Ubuntu version 22.04 and version latest and customized. You can see here I'm just running the script. Now, if you follow the URL, this is not my script actually. I'm planning to replace it with my script actually. Uh, no, Yash, this is ARM template. It's not a Terraform, but yes, Terraform files and ARM templates, there is one thing common in them. Both of them are example of infrastructure as a code, IAAC. That means you define your infrastructure in a file, and then there will be a command line utility or an automation tool which will convert that description into an actual resource. Terraform is a third party tool, and ARM is Azure specific tool. If you use Terraform, you can use it for multiple cloud. Getting my point, but ARM template is exclusively for Azure only. Fine. OK, by the way, you can build images and all using Terraform as well. But right now what we are using here is Azure Image Builder. If you use something like Terraform, it will run on your local machine. It will use your machine CPU, RAM, storage, network, etc. Right here in Azure, the entire build operation is actually happening on cloud. Can you see this? You will notice one thing. The image building is still running. Yes, the task is still running and it's not actually consuming any CPU and RAM on my system. My system CPU RAM consumption consumption is nominal. See this. While the image is actually getting built, can you see my CPU utilization here is around 17 to 18 percent only? All the system utilization is quite low on my system because it's not running on my local machine. It's running somewhere else. Now this is what the script is actually doing. It's just going to display a banner, customized banner. I guess the version building is still going on. You can see it here. You can check the progress also. This is the version I'm building right now. Replication status is in progress. That means build is done. It is just copying it to the second region. Is that clear? It's just getting copied to another region. You can even create a VM, but don't do that unless the status here change from creating to successful. So we will have to wait for quite a few minutes more now. Yes. Meanwhile, you have any questions, please post them here in a chat window.
Yeah, sure. I will just list down the steps. Meanwhile, your suggestion is absolutely valid. So what I did as a step one. Step one that you need is you have to check the resources or provider registrations. Providers. Registration status. Now for provider registration status, what I did to check the registration status, I used a couple of commands. So let me let me just print all those commands here. How I did the check basically. For checking the registration status, OK, here it is. These are the commands that I used. OK, these were the commands. These commands actually just let me uh, told me whether these all services are registered or not. OK, the services that I actually have to check. I have to check for four different types of services, virtual machine images, then what uh, key vault. Then. Compute. Then. Storage. And I guess network is also required here. Let me go and check if network was mentioned here. Yes, network. So you have to first verify whether all these resource providers are in place. Now, if any. Of these providers are not registered. Then register them. Now you don't have to run all these commands. You just need this commands only for those services which are not already registered. OK. Just a minute. OK, so. These are the commands I'm using right now. You don't actually need all these commands. Actually, you just need one for the service which is not already registered. So let's say if you have not registered key vault, register it. If you have not registered for let's say compute, register it. If let's say you have not registered for storage, register it. And if you have not registered for network, register it. You may not need to actually run all these five statements. Getting my point? All the five statements may or may not be needed in here. Is that clear? Yes, everyone. So you may or may not need all these commands. After that, yeah, my successfully build job has successfully run now. But anyway, let's continue with sharing the steps here. After this, I created few environment variables. I defined some environment variables here. These are the environment variables that I defined here. After the variables, what I did next, I have to now create the required resource group. How do you create the resource group? The resource group creation command is quite simple. You already have this resource group name and location defined as a variable. So run a script that will let you create the resource group. It is actually included in my case. It is included in here. A simple resource group creation script that will run here like this. Can you see that? Hello. This will create the resource group. After creating the resource group, next thing that you need to create is a new user identity. And this is how I created a new user identity. New user identity that we will use with the VM to provide all the privileges to it. So this is the identity that we create. So we provide the identity name 
Now you will notice one thing, the identity name in order to make sure that my identity name is unique. I have used prefix AIB user ID and then the date timestamp. It will make sure that it is fairly unique string and it will not you. You don't have to confuse it with something else. So this string we are creating or and we are using an identity here. OK, now. Fine. Fine. So we created the identity here. After creating an identity, what I did next was I created another variable called builder CID. This will create a name for my uh, Azure image builder. These are the commands that will do it. I will be using this builder ID and CID later in the later part of my script. So let me add this also to my steps. Create and extract the builder ID. That we will use later on in our script. So this will actually get you very few variables. OK, like builder ID and uh, builder CID. Now you people are using Windows PowerShell, so you just have to make sure that it always begins with dollar symbol here. Is that clear? Don't worry, I will, you know, publish this on the Git repository and I will put it in the chat window also so that you can also try this out. So this is the builder ID created. And my image is already created. I'm just following the steps here. OK, now we have to get the role definition file. I have already shared with you my role definition file, but let me show you again how the role definition file should look alike. So you will notice one thing. The role definition file that I have created is like this. Let me put it here. You have to create. Role definition dot JSON. Now this is my role definition file. Now please remember in the role definition file you need to update. Update. Few placeholders or few variables. In. The JSON file. Now what variables you need to replace? Like for example, can you see a very first variable called image def role? Hello. Replace img def role with value of dollar img def role variable. Am I clear? How will you do this? Now here in my template or my script, I'm doing it via script. OK, I'm doing it using a command called said command. SED said command. OK, but on Windows PowerShell, you don't have anything like said, so you have to do it manually. So maybe open this file in notepad or something and manually copy and paste the values. But how do I get the value of image role def? You can use command echo image role def and it will show you what is the value and then take that value and add it here. Is that clear? What is the other value you need? You need resource group name and subscription ID. So. Go and replace. Subscription. ID. With your subscription ID value. Value of you already have a variable declared subscription ID. Use that value. And then you have to provide a resource group name. So replace. RG name. With. Value of. SIG. Resource group. Name. Oh, sorry, not name. It's just resource group. So please remember you have to first display all these variables values uh, using echo command. Echo command will actually display the values to you. Once echo command shows all the values to you, you can then update the file like this. Is that clear? Now. Save the changes. 
Now your file is up to date. Now you have a proper role definition file created. Now that your role definition file is ready, what should you do next? Anyone? Yes, tell me you have some question here. Hello. OK, this is how you will apply the changes or this is how you will use this role definition. Use. Role definition dot JSON. Updated one. To create new as your role. And this is how you can create a new as your role. Please remember the last parameter here is the file parameter dot forward slash means file is right now there in your current folder. If it is somewhere else, provide the appropriate path. Is that clear? So I'll just call this on my desktop for a time being and then I will move it here. OK, fine. So these are the steps I did so far. This will create the role definition. After role definition is created, I will assign this role to this particular user. I have already created a variable in previous uh, steps, so you should not have any problem in here doing this. Assign the role to newly created identity. You have already created an identity earlier. Now to that identity assign this role. So there is a AZ role assignment create command. This is builder CID. Now this builder CID, we got this builder CID here. Can you see this? In step number six, we have created builder CID and we are passing it here. Role, image role definition, that also we have defined somewhere here. Image role definition, where it is. I guess this is the image definition role. Image role definition. Yeah, image role definition is declared somewhere on the top. Did I skip this? This variable need to be declared somewhere. I guess here I have defined it. I missed that. Sorry. So you will have to first set the image role definition. Now here, instead of this, you have to provide some unique string. I don't know whether PowerShell has date variable. Date is uh, property available in uh, Bash. OK, and then in PowerShell also we have date. Let me check if I can just modify this to make it work with PowerShell. Oh, 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 oh. So there are so many functions available for date basically. Get date function I can use. Get date. And let's see what I can do with this. Uh, get date, we can get the date value, year value, month value second value or we can just say we can provide the format can you see this i guess this would be better to use so i will just make a small change here okay Image definition. I will just use here. Get date and this. This will allow me to set the image role definition here properly. Let me check if it is already set properly. Image role definition. Yeah, it's working fine, I guess. So this I will use here. OK, this is the role definition because otherwise we will get an error while doing this role assignment. 
it will give you an error if role assignment you try to do. It will say this variable not found. Now I have updated it. Now these are the steps. If you have not already done this, these are the steps you should follow and you will get a properly created role here. Can you see that? How many of you have followed at least quite few steps from the beginning? Hello? Fine, I'll give you a few more minutes to make sure that you have reached number 10 now. Five more minutes.
OK, fine. So with these steps, you are just creating the required privileges, setting the required privileges or policy, uh, sorry, a role for the actual process. Once you create the role and assign it, I guess I have done both of that here, role creation and role assignment. The next step was uh, for me was creating the image gallery. So we can create image gallery using these two tools, these two commands. Create the image gallery and the image definition inside the gallery. So these are the commands that I used. First command will create the gallery and second command will create image definition inside the gallery. Can you see that? Hello? Please remember all these variables like publisher name, my offer, etc. are already defined earlier here. Can you see that? So whatever you have written here, the same values will be used here for creating the image definition. Image definition will use the same values. After that, there is another template that I want you to use. The template that will actually define how you are actually going to provision the VM. There is a template that I have here. Just give me a minute. I will share the template also. This is my image template. Now this is quite lengthy template and there are lots of placeholders in this template that you need to modify. OK, so how to do that? Now you need image template. Which uses as your ARM syntax. It's basically a JSON file only, and this is the template file. You will notice the template file has lots of placeholders just like my previous file. Now, what are those placeholders? You need to edit the above JSON file and find and replace few variables with actual values. Now, what all variables you need to find and replace? I will specify, I will show you what all variables you need to find and replace. Can you see the variables that you need to find and replace here? Hello? Can you see this? These all variables you need to find and replace. Now in my original script, I'm doing this find and replace using a Linux utility called sed. We don't have this Linux sed utility in Windows, unfortunately, but this is what I will just mention. So, you need to replace this with value of this environment variable. Is that clear? Similarly, you need to replace, find and replace RG name with value of this variable here. Am I clear? Yes. Similarly, you will have to replace this variable with value of this variable. And let me do this. Replace this variable with value of. See, manually doing this is actually kind of, uh, you know, time consuming. When I run this via script, it runs successfully within just a couple of seconds. It took time to build the image, but the script was executed in just no time. I'm just updating the script so that you should be able to use this script now, even with your default PowerShell. Even if you don't have Linux shell or WSL installed, you should be able to do this without any need for WSL or Linux shell. With Windows PowerShell, you should be able to do that. But for finding and replacing these variables, you have to unfortunately just use Windows Notepad. OK, open this file in Windows Notepad or any other text editor and manually go and find or do the find replace and replace these variables. Replace. Run output with. Please remember when you replace, do not leave those angular brackets there. Do not remove those angular brackets. OK. 
Uh, sorry, remove the angular bracket. Don't keep them. That is what I mean to say. With this. After you do all the find and replace, now it's ready for you to use. Ready for you to go. I guess there I made a mistake. This is slash, not the percentage. Otherwise, it will simply fail to run. OK, after that, once everything is ready, this is the command. Now, after you make the changes, use the modified template to create new image. Now, your template will be based, uh, your image will be based on this template only. Now, if you want to install something, provide the script reference in the template file then. Here it is, everything is set. Now this will create the new resource. This will create the new image. Now this will actually just create the build a definition or you can see a job. This will actually create a job. OK, this job need to be invoked. So how do you invoke the job you created in the step number four? Invoke the job or you can say in other words, run the job to actually build the image. Now how do you do that? This is the command. And guess what? This is the last command. This is the last thing that you need to run here. Okay. So these were the extra commands or these were the five extra commands after you do the, that original part here. So line number 11, 12, 12 is little bigger because you have to create this uh, JSON file there. Or I will do one thing. I will share with you the path to an existing JSON file that you can just download and use. Is that clear? That would be better. So how many steps you have followed now? Hello, Javid. Earlier you said you have followed still step number four, right? This is how the image should be ready. Now just give me five minutes. I will show you the image that I have built earlier. OK. Oh, that's great. So let's give him some time. He is already at seventh step. Uh, in order to make these template files easier to create, uh, I will share with you the direct URL of the template file. So instead of creating them manually, you can just go to the URL and download them. Let me share with you my template files. These are my templates. Image definition.json file. You can download this from this URL. OK, so Javid, what you can do is you can just download the both the JSON files from the link I'm sharing with you now. OK, but please remember these files contain some placeholders like this, for example. So you have to still open the file in Notepad and replace the placeholders with their correct values. Is that clear? Yeah, this will make things easier for you. Yeah. I will share the updated readme file or updated demo steps files in my the, in, in the same Git repository later. So once you visit it, all the steps will be clear. OK. Just five minutes and then I will show you how to create a VM from this created image. Image is already published, by the way. My task has already completed. OK. Oh, wait, I guess I am not logged in into Azure portal anymore. I will show you where the image is. In just five minutes, I will show you how to create a new virtual machine from recently created image. OK.
I'm just giving those people who are trying this demo some time so that uh, they will at least complete the initial 10 steps. OK. OK, fine. Let's see. This is the compute gallery I was talking about, and let's see if my image is listed here in this compute gallery. So image is already listed. We have seen it a couple of minutes ago. So this is my gallery and uh, inside this gallery. This is the definition from the definition. I will go to an, a particular version of my image. OK, here it is. I'll click on this. This is the image definition name version number. And there is an option to create either VMSS or a single virtual machine out of it. Let's see now how I'm creating a virtual machine out of it. So this is the version or this is the image that I built a couple of minutes ago, and now I'm using this image to create a VM. Obviously, I'll put this VM in a different resource group. Name of the VM, let's say test one, and you can put this VM in other resource location as well. Let's say put it in East US. Even though it was built in West US, I want to place the resulting image in East US. And did you notice this? Instead of standard Windows and Linux image, it is now showing the image gallery path. My image, 
sorry, my gallery forward slash my image definition forward slash. This is the version number. This is the definition number. You select this. Is that clear? Can you see that all on my screen? Yeah, it's there. If I scroll down, I can choose the VM size. Let's say let's choose a smaller size here. Let's choose this one. I can use public key prior. I can use the basic username and password. Password based authentication as usual. This is the virtual machine I'm creating from the template I have created or image I have created. So just the standard structure here, nothing unusual about it. This will create its own uh, network as well, and I don't want this auto scheduler. Monitoring enable disable, that's your choice. Advanced option, you can choose whatever you want and then review and create. This will create it now. Validation is done and here I was creating a virtual machine from the image template I have used or the image definition I have created now. OK, this is a virtual machine created from my image definition instead of selecting an image from. As your uh, marketplace. OK, it will take standard time what it takes for a normal standard Ubuntu VM. Yeah, and this VM is ready now. Can you see that? Hello? Virtual machine is ready. You will see this is Ubuntu 22.04 VM internally. I can show you how to connect inside it and check what is it. So using SSH, I probably need to just write SSH. And then this username and password. So let's do that. SSH. Username and pass your username at the rate IP address. Yes, now it will ask me for the password. And here I entered the password and this will take me inside the VM now. Can you see this? This is what I had included in the script. Do you remember that? The script I'm running is just doing this, adding this panel. Instead of this panel, you can have a script with dedicated, you can say, uh, uh, packages installation, etc., happening there. Okay. Yes, everyone. Any questions, any queries here? Here I created a virtual machine from the image I created earlier. No questions. Hello. 
मोहित यश लक्ष्मी अंकिता जावेद एनी क्वेश्चन डोंट इवन हैव अ क्वेश्चन लाइक दिस इज अ लिनक्स बी एम हाउ टू बी बिल्ड अ विंडोज बी एम देन I have just shown you how to build a Linux VM, right? Hello. Yes, you can create Windows VM also with the same process. With the same process, only thing that would be different is you have to use a different template. To show you an example, this is a template file, JSON template file for Windows VM. You will notice this is same virtual machine image template and image builder template. Here it would be Windows 2019 instead of Ubuntu. Entire other process will be same. All the other process will be same. You just have to use a different JSON template file. Even the role definition will be same. Even the role definition will be same. Only thing is you just have to use a different JSON template. The JSON template will define which kind of virtual machine you are creating, whether you are creating a Windows virtual machine or you are creating a Linux virtual machine. The template will decide. Is that clear? The process otherwise it's same. Now looks like there is a question posted by Javid. Can we create Windows VM with portal? Actually, there is no direct way to do it in portal. You have to still do a few things. You have to do it from CLI. Let me tell you what you can do with CLI and what you can do with portal. With portal, you can create the image gallery, right? But creating image definition and rest of the resource, you have to use Azure CLI only. Another challenge is the name that you have given in portal and the name that you are using in CLI has to match. Just to show you an example, if you want to create an image gallery using Azure portal, you will notice one thing as your portal asks you so many questions and it actually more confusing in here. Maybe like I personally like CLI uh, more than uh, portal, so that might be uh, my perspective at it. Let's say image gallery. This is actually called Azure Compute. Compute gallery basically it is called. Not able to see this. Fine. Azure Compute Gallery. There is an option here to create a new compute gallery. Can you see this? Hello. You can always. You can always create a compute gallery from the portal directly like this. OK, so provide the gallery name. Let's say my windows. Gallery. Or my windows images provide the name description sharing method or rollback next this is the compute gallery you have created but now you have to remember the gallery name and the resource group where you have created the gallery is that clear hello yes now this will create the gallery now in order to create the image inside the gallery you will have to now create the as your image uh, yeah, as your image builder instance. So let's search for image builder. Wait a second. This is building here. Image builder. Virtual machine image definition template and. Image builder. Service. We have images VM definition. Let me check as your image builder. Is it available here? Looks like the portal doesn't have any UI for it right now. Documentation is there. Yes, here it is as your virtual machine image builder. That service is available here, so you have to search where it is. Once you find it, you will get here. And then here you have to provide. No, this is actually not the image builder. 
This is actually just permission for it. So no, there is no UI available here. What you have to do is you can create the image gallery resource group using portal, but rest of the things you will have to do it from the CLI, unfortunately. Maybe in a couple of months, Azure might provide a UI for this particular uh, tool. Okay. There is also a documentation link available that you can follow. Create Windows VM by using Azure VM Image Builder. You will notice they are the same steps. Can you see this? They are valid validating whether the required registers uh, providers are registered. If not, register them. Set the variable, the same thing that I was doing. Then use the CLI to get the subscription ID. Create the user assigned managed identity. Role definition. Same role definition, by the way. This is the role definition editing. Create the image, right? And then, okay, this is delete, deleting the resource group later on. This is how you can perform cleanup. But before that, start the image build as you as a resource invoke action. Can you see that? So unfortunately, with portal, you cannot do everything. There are few things you can do with portal, like image gallery creation and resource group creation. Rest of the thing you have to do, go back to Azure CLI only. You know what is better than? Instead of doing half of the thing in portal and half of the thing in CLI. Don't you think doing everything in CLI would be better? Fine, that's it. So I guess uh, Chaitali has shared a feedback link here in the chat window. So if you can see there is a feedback link there. Please go ahead and provide your feedback on this session. Meanwhile, I'll perform a cleanup operation. I have created a script to clean up everything, delete everything as well. Okay, that's great. Any questions anybody has here? Please let me know. Fine then, thank you everyone for joining. I hope you have enjoyed the session and you have uh, learned quite new way to build virtual machine images using Azure Image Builder. It's very similar internally how third party tool like Packer will build image for you. Only thing is you don't have any dependency on third party tool. Instead of using any, any kind of third party tool, downloading it, installing it in your local machine and building it, you can instead do this with Azure provided service. In future, Microsoft will provide a nice user interface in the Azure portal to do everything, but till then you have to use CLI. And I believe CLI is more beneficial. It was out of scope for us for this particular event, but it's very much possible to run this entire script from a DevOps pipeline or Jenkins pipeline, and you can automate this. That is going to be even, uh, you can say, more beneficial. Okay. I will go ahead and delete the VM. OK, so thanks everyone. Uh, there are a few more links uh, Chaitali has posted on the chat message. Can you see that? Uh, yes, sir. we have seen that. Fine, that's great. That's great. So have a good day. Thank uh, you, Mahindra, you, sir, you, for the webinar. You,
I will request all the participants to just fill out the feedback form. Also, it will be great if you will share the Google reviews. I have shared the link with you all in the chat box. Just just before leaving the webinar, just do the two things. Link has been provided. Share your Google reviews as well as the feedback form. 